Now, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. I'm Spitface. Please welcome our host, the First Lady of Sports Talk, Cheryl Smith. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing out there today? Oh, hey, I, I, I'm sure, you know, I'd have, I'd have looked out, and it looks like everybody made it. <laughs> 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 and, and, and I saw a few so folks say, I'm ready for some football. And they got a little bit with that Hall of Fame game. Check yeah. out the music this week on Shout Out. We are featuring performances from David Giddens. Will he find his shining style? Get the cold feeling of the mute button. First lady, we're ready. What you saying? Each week, we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world, not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle, let the sea. Spirit, carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdie known as the NFL has decided to fly far, far, far away from the six-game suspension imposed on Deshaun Watson and appealed the decision. The judge ruled in giving Watson the suspension that that precedent was being followed. In an in NFL, in making this decision, looked at the short and long-term impact with the players and the public, sees they want to send a message. Should women stand in support of the NFL and demanding Watson get at least a year's suspension, even though it doesn't hurt him financially? After baseball laid the hammer on a player with a suspension over a year, did that force the NFL's hand with the public? Marvelous Marvin Hagler, rest in peace, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you say? Well, you know, <laughs> we were waiting for this controversial decision, Spitface, regarding Deshaun Watson's fate, and like it said, that six-game suspension came down. Now, you know, it's funny, as I said on previous shows, I thought he was only going to get between six and eight games because the NFL has never really penalized players severely for domestic violence and and sexual assault. They really have not. Now, many women feel that the six-game suspension was a slap in the face and definitely want more, but do I believe they support the – I mean, they support the longer suspension, of course, for Watson, but do I believe they will stand with the NFL? No, they ain't standing with the NFL on no – no, under no circumstances, they're not standing with the NFL. They're standing, us. you know, they're not they're not standing with them, but they don't want the shine to get off lightly. But they're not standing with the NFL because the NFL has really not been very respectful to women's rights. I mean, their pattern of history, their pattern of history demonstrates this sad reality because Ray Rice situation. And even before Ray Rice, you know, there was the Ben Roethlisberger incident when he supposedly sexually assaulted more than one woman. And what happened was, if I'm not mistaken, it was six games went down to four games, something like that. The game, the number of games got reduced. And there's been many cases after Ray Rice that still did not receive any punishment longer than six games. So that's the reason why the judge decided to only give Deshaun Watson a six game because the NFL has been very lenient when it comes to these type of um, um, offenses. They, I mean, they they seem to care more about the integrity of the game with gambling on the game and everything else and all these excessive hitting more than they do with abusing women. So that's the reason why I don't feel these women will be standing with the NFL, but for sure they feel that Deshaun Watson should get a much more severe um, suspense, severe suspension than six games. And they probably would want him to be out for a year. Now, it's interesting, the NFL actually wanted an indefinite suspension. That's what they were going for. Now, do I think the, N- the Major League Baseball ruling had anything to do with the NFL requesting for an indefinite suspension? No, I don't think it had anything to do with it. 
I think what happened was um, the NFL was, to me, the NFL was probably for them in a win situation because, you know, we all know that um, before this new system came out, Roger Goodell was the judge, jury, and the executioner. <laughs> I mean, he was all three. And to be honest with you, Spitface, I don't see anything changing because what I don't understand is how <laughs> the Players Association agreed to this new system. They agreed that if right, if if any person or any if the NFL or the Players Association appealed the case. It still goes through Roger Goodell. He can assign somebody, which he did in this situation. He decided to assign another judge to appeal the case. Yeah, but we all know that judge probably is somebody that's going to be in favor of the NFL. I mean, do you really think anything's going to be different? Do you think he's going to assign somebody who's going to rule against him? No, 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 no. So, I mean... It's to me a ridiculous system. I mean, I, I mean, if I'm a player, I don't think it's a fair system. Even though we all know that um, Deshaun Watson to me was guilty, and even the judge that ruled the case said his behavior was egregious and predatory. And <laughs> like you said, anytime you're going to go to 24 different uh, massage therapists, you are a predator. <laughs> okay, let's just put it that way. You know, so um, even though he is not remorseful. He still says he has not done anything wrong, yet that judge was not exemplified. He did not exemplify what he did, did not even speak to about him in good terms, but yet he said he didn't do anything wrong. But, again, I'm getting back to this system. This system is set up to fail. The system is set up for the NFL to come out on top of the players. I don't understand how these players allow this situation. The only way this system could be fair if the judge that Roger Goodell um, selects to appeal the process is without any bias or loyalty to Goodell. And I'm sorry, Spitface, I don't see it. I don't understand it. And to me, we're just back in the same situation. And the only thing is, from this point of view, the NFL, their optics look better for them because now they're the ones that are going against what the judge decided. So they, it looks great for them. But, again, I just don't understand this system. And uh, Deshaun, look forward to being out for at least a year, because that's probably what's going to happen to you. All right, Spitface, what's your opinion about this situation? Uh, yeah. uh, is it uh, First Lady, <clears throat> is it time for us to – Hop on that plane to Vegas and lay in that bet. <laughs> he's gonna get at least he's gonna be out this year. Uh, I, I, I think it might be trending that way. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. But uh, 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 one, uh, you know, it's so interesting. Okay, the uh, the judge ruled that uh, you know Watson should have six a six game suspension based on precedent and you know just so that you know first lady some some people can kind of get what precedent is see precedent is like see they had this you know uh you know basically they had this ruling in the supreme court about 50 years ago that set a precedent for a woman's right to choose and privacy in having that decision. So when things would come up where there were issues and problems around that subject, they would get struck down because the precedent had been set. And see, when you have like a 40, 50-year precedent, you know, uh, of women and families having a choice about something, and then you take it away, you know, people get a little upset. And uh, uh, the players will be upset. 
because what they now I, I'm I'm going to say that not all the players because there are many players who say you know I don't do anything. I'm not out here, you know, uh, I am glad I am playing in the NFL. I take care of my family. You know, uh, I got my financial interests. I got personal goals. And none of them involve situations where I'm I'm going to even be bothered by uh, the commissioner's office. Other than something on the field that, you know, I'm a player, I'm human, uh, I might do something that violate a rule on the field. But it will not be something that's beyond, you know, like a, 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 a slap, you, you shouldn't have hit that, you hit low, you're fine. Oh, oh it's going to happen. You know, play it and make mistakes. They, you know, sometimes they get, you know, you got somebody, you know, blocking you, pushing you, all of that. Sometimes you can get a little overheated. So you, but... They can live with that. That is normal in the course of the game. When it reaches this kind of situation, something happened. And, uh, uh, and uh, 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 I agree with you, lady, uh, first lady, that uh, uh, le- women may not be, quote, standing with the NFL. And that's what the NFL knows. The NFL is saying, you know what? Half our fans happen to be women, you know, and uh, women have tolerated a lot out of us because they like our game. But don't think that we want to go go and start upsetting them when we already, you know, they're already giving us side eyes. Okay, I like to play, I like, to, you know, but but the, but but how y'all treat, you know, women looking at them all side with side eyes. So uh, the NFL always wins with the players, <laughs> you know. And, and I'm going to tell you something. If you are a working person, if you are employed by someone, and I mean employed, you know. Now, there are some of y'all who are like, you know, ent- quote, entrepreneurs or singlepreneurs or solopreneurs, and there are those who you own legitimate business, and you got employees. Well, all of y'all got a boss. If you own the company, you got a boss. The boss might be your customers. <laughs> you know, that's your ultimate boss because they're the ones who put money in your pocket. So they, that's your boss. If you're an employee, your boss, your boss. And uh, uh, the and the boss always wins. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Now, there are the cases, you know, the, the boss quote, don't win. But in the overall scheme, the people forwarding out the mon- money will ultimately win the game because <laughs> they're the ones divvying out the cash. Now, um, uh, whatever agreement uh, dealing with punishment penalties ultimately is going to be won where the NFL will win. You, they just not going to get around that. That just does not happen. We're not going to write an agreement where y'all win. No. Now, there may be, uh, uh, you may, as they quote, say on the merits, uh, come away with a resolution that, you know, everyone will, okay, fine, this is going to be the deal. And, uh, but <laughs> if it ain't like that, ultimately the boss is going to win. Now, uh, uh, the NFL is making the easiest, smartest move. No matter how upset the players are, they ain't that upset as long as they're getting paid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, when, when I was in the employee world, I would say this. The, what you have to pay me is not really based on the skills or even what I'm producing. What you have to pay me is based on how much bullshit I got to go through to perform <laughs> the duties and tasks assigned. So the more BS I got to put up with, you got to pay me more. I'm, I'm being paid to tolerate the BS. Not to do the job. I can handle that, the work. That, but if I got to tolerate BS, then I want more money. Because that's, you know, that, that can be years off my life, dealing, <laughs> dealing with your, your crap. And, uh, but... Uh, uh, so they're making the smartest move. In the long run, 
everything helps them to come down hard in the long run because it comes because why because the boss which is the the fans and people putting money into the NFL and and ultimately that comes down to the band, the fans listeners viewers cuz they're the ones generating the money for the whole thing to go and if half of my women everything helps to have, so that women go okay you know, because you're going to be looked at side-eyed. I don't know guys married 30 years. They're still being looked at side-eyed. <laughs> you know, but I did hear. I forgot who said it. But this is a very wise. I'm, I'm just going to give you a, a wise statement I heard, that whenever you get feel like complaining about, you know, your significant other, wife, whatever, choices, remember one of them was you. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, first lady. Okay. One well, of them was yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like, it, it is going to be interesting to see how this judge appeals this case. And once the judge appeals the case, how Roger Goodell is going to apply his um, decision. Because, you know, Roger Goodell has the final rule. And I said, we back to him being the judge, the jury, and the executioner again. <laughs> oh, by the way, one a, a caveat of the indefinite. When you get an indefinite suspension, you have to apply to be reinstated. Right. Right. And you have to also, the other part about that is, is that you have to show, like, some kind of, this is how I'm addressing the situation, how I'm, you know, so uh, I, I think that's the part that, that, that they really like. If it's just that you, you just got a slap on the wrist, you didn't really didn't lose any money because the Browns were smart enough to, to, to instead of front-loading the contract, delay it, stagger it so that, hey, you know, you, you're losing some pocket change. And, yeah, uh, well, uh, I mean, he has to be reinstated, but my gosh, Josh, Josh Gordon been reinstated. Uh, how many times he was reinstated? I don't know, but it, 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 <laughs> it's been a hell of a lot of time. But, of course, it was, it's was it been different type of situation. But if Josh Gordon get reinstated as many times as he's been reinstated, I'm quite sure uh, Deshaun Watson will get reinstated. Only thing he got to show is that he's not going to any more massage therapists. All right, <laughs> over to you. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, rocking my peers, putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion, overpowering, over the competition, I'm towering. Wrecking shop when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare, you better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest of the all get sliced and dice competition playing the prize. I'm going to knock you out. Huh. Mama said knock you out. Huh. We are talking about the knockout punch the eight new inductees landed and becoming members of the NFL Hall of Fame. Dick Vermeil, Cliff Brandt, Bryant Young, Tony Boselli, Art McNally, Richard Seymour, Sam Mills, and Leroy Butler. Now, Dick Vermeil is the 28th coach to make the Hall of Fame. He is the mastermind of the greatest show on turf. There was some bad boys. And Art McNally, because I know that was a head scratcher. Who the hell was Art McNally? Uh, Art McNally is a, a referee. So, you know, it just, you know, I was like, wow, you know, they, they, they're they being more inclusive of, of the pieces that make up the game. And that's that's good. I like that. Now, uh, and, uh, you know, some of the other players, y'all may or may not, Cliff Branch with the Raiders, Tony Baselli with the Jaguars, and, man, Leroy Butler, you know, just, just you know, some great players. And, uh uh, what, you know, all of that. That's why they Hall of Fame. But you know, uh, it's uh, you know we we see or uh, we see in the in the in the media, 
you know, and YouTube, because YouTube, social, all of that. It's all media now, so we really ain't got to make a distinction. Um, uh, you know, just so much, I'll just say negativity. You know, did it seem weird? You know, having people speak on stage, and, you know, it was like in positive ways, humbling, you know, giving all the negativity and division. You know, was it rather refreshing? Now, first lady, I was looking at it, and I said, you know, maybe I'm just an old cornball sentimentalist. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, hey, tributes to the game, to the players, you know, mom, dad, you know. And, you know, what I looked at was, was that uh, there are those who are just really cynical. And they can see no good in anything. And uh, it's actually important to them. And, you know, when I'm, as I was watching uh, different induction speeches, you know, you know, you get that, you know, these are guys who they did not expect that there was going to be in anybody's Hall of Fame. You know, and uh, uh, the other thing was that, you know, sometimes, you know, you look at the age of the person and in this context. See, you may have, quote, got your glory, had your, quote, glory days. But, you know, God willing, you live beyond, quote, your glory days. So uh, there are still things that these guys achieved and wanted to achieve in life. And uh, one of them was an element due to their glory days. But they still had that where there was something that they wanted to achieve, to accomplish, to be recognized for in life. And uh, and it goes beyond, um, uh, you know, uh, what camp are you in? You know, like, you know, when you, you know, saw the different players, it wasn't a, well, you know, I can only cheer for them because they're, if they're a, a Republican player, you know, or they're a Democratic player, you know, you're independent, you know, that because uh, so many things have been, been politicized that have no need to be. So, you know, I, 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 I find it, you know, out of my years, a little, you know, there was a little corniness to it because of, you know, what it is and, you know, uh, going to events and since, you, since you've been in elementary school. But it was still great, you know, and they really had a great class. So uh, uh, I, I think it was nice and refreshing uh, to just hear some, some gentlemen, you know, speak in positive, humble, proud tones. First lady, what you say? Okay, well, ooh, I guess uh, <laughs> I looked at this situation. I'll be honest with you, I'm going to put out this. I did not see the Hall of Fame um, inductee ceremonies. I didn't watch it. I um, uh, It's actually been rather quiet about the Hall of Fame this year. Usually when people are inducted to the Hall of Fame, because the whole process begins in January, and I think the decisions are made by January 18th. Normally you hear who's the leaks, like, okay, this person is in the Hall of Fame, this is person in the Hall of Fame. But this time, for some reason, <laughs> nothing was leaked. Believe it or not, the first time people knew who was going to be in the Hall of Fame is when it was announced at the Hall of Fame game, Thursday. So why was that happening? Why did names didn't get leaked? I mean, is it something that they wanted to be tight-lipped about? I guess, spit face, I mean, from the point of view of being tight-lipped, I think it was tight-lipped because people were rather surprised of several of the inductees. I mean, let's face it, there was not one inductee, not one, that was a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, I mean to be honest with you, this is. Uh, they, I think they said this is uh, the first time since 2012, and only the second time in the past 26 years 
with no first ballot inductees? That's something to really think about. So, yes, in your aspect, and what you were talking about, Smith, they say, yes, it was refreshing to hear from guys who didn't think they would make it, even though there were, to me, some surefire Hall of Fame, like Richard <laughs> I mean, they, even though they didn't make it on the first ballot, but they still would have done, would have made it. But you have somebody like um, Sam Mills, who was on his last eligibility. Tony before he w- Huh? Tony Baselli. Yeah, okay, they were on the last eligibility before they would have been, may, probably make it through the seniors. Um, uh, committee, so um, it that's why I mean it was a whole hum, you know. That's why it was no fanfare about who was being inducted because many of these guys, you know, were probably borderline inductees. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you remember back in 2020 um, on the Dan Patrick show, radio show, Deion Sanders says. They letting too many players in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> quote unquote. What is a crowd? What is a Hall of Famer now? This is what, what is a Hall of Fame now? Is it a guy who played a long time? Is it so? It's so skewed now. Once upon a time, a Hall of Famer was a player who changed the darn game, who made you want to reach in your pocket and pay your admission to see the guy play. That's not a Hall of Famer anymore. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you're a Hall of Famer, you're a Hall of Famer, you're a Hall of Famer. They let everybody in this thing. It's not exclusive anymore, and I don't like it. <laughs> so, so when you see that first ballot Hall of Famers are not, we're not getting in on this class, when you see that people were at their last eligibility getting in this class, it was nothing to be excited about, spit face, and that's the reason why nothing leaked. I think the Hall of Fame wanted to be tight-lipped about it because <laughs> I don't think they were that excited themselves about who they let in the Hall of Fame. So I'm not coming down hard on these players because, you know, they are to be commended. Uh, like you said, it probably was – I mean, I didn't see it, so I can't say it was refreshing. I, I really can't say it was refreshing. I mean, <coughs> okay, we'll give First Lady a second there, but um, I guess I'll choke it up on my words. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, First Lady, uh, I guess the question would be who would have been eligible this uh, this year and they didn't get voted in on the first round. Well, somebody is always eligible each year. Like this is their first year eligibility, and uh, they well, didn't get voted in. So who were them? I think it was was Demarcus Ware. Um, I'm trying to see, but you know what? Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is, they should do it like the. Um, hold up for a second. All right. Well, we'll first say we'll let, let you get your throat back together there, but. Uh, uh, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take us to break. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from David Gibbons on Shout Out Part 1. The music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First Lady, I can't wait to hear the music from David Gibbons. Okay, on Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today we are featuring David Gibbons from Green Pond. They say, quote, vocalist and songwriter David Gibbons is a natural creative force and a boundary-pushing pop R&B EDM artist. Gifted with a unique unique and versatile talent, David makes fun, engaging, or original, excuse me, engaging original music unlike anyone else on the scene. All right, DJ, let's hear When I Fail. in my heart, broken and bruised, 
catch me when I fall. Will you catch me when I fall? production everything so i'm definitely going to shout it out enjoyed it a lot david given so um you shouting it out or you uh hitting the mute button uh, I, first lady the brother snuck in some violin on us <laughs> uh, I, i'm like like the brother that went there the, 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 the snuck in some violin and made it work uh, i gotta shout it out all right, he's stuck I got to shout it out. <laughs> got to shout it out. All right, well, um, we can on part two of Shadow. We'll have another performance from that, and I just and here the our favorite underwater friend. It's time for flip it. <laughs> Or flip it while I host the pen a point and then flip the script and the pen the opposing view. To a T and Matt Jones both won national championships at Bama. But we wonder who will have the better season this year in the NFL. So we're going to get right to it. Defend the pressure is on to a T. It's do or die time. He will have the better season. First lady, nothing is more inspiring.
aspiring to an NFL football player so that they can step up their game, that either being in the final year of a contract (laughs) or about to being deposed at your position. So the pressure is on. And, you know, it's a matter of, you know, pressure can can bust the pipe. So it's a matter of can two or T hang with the press. They done went out and added some the, some players for him. You know, they, they you know, okay, we got a new coach. Okay, it's your team, big dog. What you going to do? So the pressure is on two or T, and uh, this is when players know, hey, this is the deal. You know, the two two ain't going out like Mitch. <laughs> he ain't going out like Mitch. He done won championships. So, uh, uh, one, I, I I think that uh, because of the situation with the Dolphins owner, who uh, uh, I hope he enjoys his suspension uh, and fine which was a drop in the bucket when you're a billionaire, but still, you know, <laughs> you know, he, he, he got slapped on his little wrist, uh, uh, you know, messing with the head coach, you know, uh, it's really a fresh straight, uh, 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 a, a clean slate. Tua should do well. Now, uh, uh, Mac Attack Jones had a good rookie year, but, uh, the Dolphins and the Bills and a little bit of Jets, uh, you know, they gotten better. They gotten a little bit better, and uh, Mac got a little bit more to learn. So, uh, and with the pressure being on two or T, and, and you know, you know, one thing about uh, Belichick, he ain't gonna put Mac in situations where he got to do a whole bunch of throwing. He gonna run down your throat and play and and beat you up on defense and make it easy for the quarterback to dunk and dink. So, Tua better season. First lady defend. Well, like you said, um, the pressure is definitely on Tua. He and let's face it, he doesn't have any excuses. Brian Flores is God and you know what? He never believed in Tua. <laughs> so so his coach now, uh, McMichael, is there and he believes in him. He has a deep threat in Tyree Kill. He has a much better offensive line and of course, you know, the Dolphins always had a great defense. So the question is, can Tua pass the long distance ball to Hill? Now I don't know what happened to Tua in college. He used to be able to throw some long bombs, but not sure that he can make those bombs anymore. But let's face it, he says he's healthy from his hip injury. He's fully recovered. He has no injuries, and he's already been throwing those long passes to Hill in training camp. So, you know, Hill believes in him. You know, he's been boosting his confidence, saying that he's the most accurate quarterback in the league even more accurate than Mahomes. And let's just face it, Tua is in a much, much better place with his confidence. He has the chemistry. He built chemistry with the wide receivers over the summer. And he has an offensive-minded coach. Let's face it, Brian Flores and the um, offensive coordinator they had, they didn't want Tua to do too much of nothing. (laughs) They ain't want him to do too much nothing, and believe it or not, that's going to be how it is for Mac Jones because we don't even know who the hell the offensive coordinator is for the Patriots. <laughs> you know, they got several different people who are supposed to be the Patriots coordinator. I think they said recently um, Patricia, what's his name? Patricia will be the um, um, coordinator, the one calling the play. He was an offensive I mean, he was a defensive coach. When the heck he became an offensive coordinator? I understand that uh, Belichick liked to cross-train his coaches, but my goodness. So we don't know what Mac Jones is going to have, and we don't know what he's going to go through because being a young player, 
he really needs to have somebody who knows what they're doing at that position as a coordinator. But Tua, we, that, look, Tua, Tua doesn't have to worry about that because they got a very innovative coach who loves offense. So Tua is going to be able to shine, and there's no excuses. And you're right, that pressure is going to be so hot on him, he got to he got to perform, and I believe Tua will perform. Tua will perform <laughs> because pressure will bust the pipe. And on that note, uh, now Mac Jones had a solid year as a rookie with the Patriots. This year he has weapons and something you can't get from any other place, experience. He was on the field. Now, I, you know, watch out, AFC East, he will have the better season. And now, uh, I think that Tua is going to have a great year. It's just I think that Mac Jones is going to have a little bit better season. And what's going to make it a little bit better is Tua might end up with better stats. Okay? Tua may end up, because I put it like this. You could get a whole lot. I got confidence at playing quarterback if I got Tyreek Hill. <laughs> I might be able to do so. But, you know, hey, when you when you got players with that, that kind of talent, and they got some folks, uh, you know, that that's going to help your, help your game. And if they got any semblance of a running game, oh, Tua, that, 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 that Tua should do well. But the deal is, is that old wolf in sheep's clothing called Bill Belichick. <laughs> he the, now, you know, everybody, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, they in the Super Bowl, they this and that. I go, you never underestimate Bill Belichick. Okay? You just don't. Because he really did well with Mac Jones as a rookie. The Patriots had, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, uh, player issues. You know, as far you know, not people complaining as far as personnel. They 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 needed new blood. They need you know, and they went to work. And uh, Tua T may have better stats, but watch out. For the Patriots to be a dark horse and get one of them playoff spots. And getting a playoff spot, you got a better season. That's all I'm saying, First Lady Defend. Um, well, you know, um, Mac Jones, let's face it, I mean, what can you say about Mac Jones? He had, to me, as you put with the producer, put solid year, he had a great year for a rookie. Nobody expected Mac Jones to have that type of year. And Mac should be a lot better this year because he has experience now. He'll be able to read the defense better. He's going to improve on his throwing skills. I mean, he doesn't have the pressure as Tua. His season last year was a plus. There was no expectations for him because he was chosen with the 15th pick. Versus Tua, who was chosen with the third overall pick. Do you know the pressure on you when you were third overall pick? I mean, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure for the Dolphins because the Dolphins have always had issues picking the right quarterback. They've had so many quarterbacks there that they just have not done well. They've been looking for the best quality quarterback since Dan Marino, and they haven't found him yet. And that's the pressure that Tua got to live up to. Can he be the next Dan Marina? All right? And um, they just have – they just can't seem to get it right when it comes to the quarterback. So everybody's talking about Tua. I mean, Tua is being talked about all the pundits, all the, all the NFL shows you hear, is Tua going to have a great year? Is Tua going to have a great year? That's just a lot of pressure. You don't hear people saying that about Mac Jones. And Mac Jones, like you kind of said that earlier, spit face that he's going to be functioning in a balanced offense where it's going to be more of a running game versus an aerial show. On the other hand, for Tua, 
that's not going to be running because they really don't have a great running back. They have to rely on Tua throwing the ball, and that's what McMichael wants, Tua to throw the ball. And um, like you said, Belichick is a ground-and-pound type of coach, and uh, Mac doesn't have to, to do too much. He doesn't have to do everything that Tua has to do. So when you look at the numbers, yeah, Tua probably, like you said, will have a better statistical number, but is he going to be able to lead the Dolphins to a playoff? And I don't think he's going to be able to do it because he has so much he has to do, and he has to be perfect. He has he has Tyreek Hill there. He got to get that ball to Tyreek Hill, and I don't know. He says he's healthy now, but, I mean, his hip doesn't seem like he can throw them long bombs the way he used to be able to throw them when he was in college. So Mac Jones will shine more than Tua because he has less responsibilities and he has no worries. No worries, no pressure. When you have no worries, no pressure, you play better. Unfortunately, Tua is going to play tight. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Tight, tight. First lady, please, take us to break. (laughs) He's playing tight, tight as a, oh, my gosh, playing so tight. All right, let's take us to break. <laughs> All right. Oh, I apologize. I missed my spot. <laughs> wait, a <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, yeah. You're going to have to help me out, Smith. No, well, first lady, uh, you still getting over there that earlier. Well, stay tuned up next, butt kicking, and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part 2. Welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. We have a new segment we call Butt Kicking. Butt Kicking looks at all things in the world of combat sports. All right. WWE has suspended wrestler Ronda Rousey indefinitely after she attacked an official at WWE SummerSlam. At the SummerSlam event in Nashville Saturday, Rousey, 35, lost the women's title match to Liv Morgan and appeared to take issue with the referee Dan Angler's apparent failure to notice Morgan, 28 years old, tapping out. In the immediate aftermath of the match, according to the WWE, Rousey grabbed the referee by the arm and flipped him over her shoulder and on the ring's floor, where she pinned him down until another official arrived in the ring to break the tussle up. This face, does she have a, any defense for her actions? And how long a suspension or fine would you levy? Well, even before you get to that spit face, all I'm going to say is, if it seems like she should have used those skills to win the match instead of using it on the referee. <laughs> and maybe she still would have been in the MMA if she could fight like that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Spit <laughs> Face. What do you think? I mean, how long of a suspension or fine would you levy? <laughs> now, uh, uh, there, there is no defense for action. <laughs> uh, there is a president. Could be a, you know where they find you and suspend you when the 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 bout is over and you know the other the the other uh, 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 athlete like attacks the the you know like the bout is over and then you know they you won and then the guy boom starts now that has happened and they, they usually give you a nice little suspension for that. But they really had to kind of do a little extra, and I hate to say this for for, for, for Miss Rousey, uh, because you attacked a referee. You know, uh, uh, um, you know, referees, umpires, and fans, and other personnel, it, you know, who are outside the the, the combatants, uh, that you get a higher penalty. So she's gonna get that. But you know, I I look at you know 
Rhonda, you know, can I get your number? Because I need a girlfriend like that. You know, look, <laughs> I need a, a girlfriend like that. Look, uh, 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 we need to hook up, darling, you know, that way, because I can stand some protection, you know, and, and I'll get your bail money. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. That's yeah. all I'm saying, first of all. Yeah, she, she needs to but, definitely. But I saw it. I did see the clip. Uh, hey, <laughs> she got some skills. <laughs> yeah, she got skills. All right, it's time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It, part two. Will Tom Brady have 45 touchdowns this season for being 45? <laughs> Hell, the men. Tom Brady had 43 touchdowns last season. He will have 45 to make a statement. Spit face defend. Uh, oh, this first lady, if there's ever a chance for ego, <laughs> and we, you know, not that I'm saying, you know, that Tom Brady has an ego, but, you know, when you the GOAT, you know, you kind of get a little bit of an ego. And, hey, uh, last, last season, uh, he had 43, and, um, and this season, you know, it looks like the team has improved. And, uh, not, you know, uh, I, th- I think he's going to do everything that he can. And the coaches are going to do everything they can. Because if he gets to 40-something, 40, 40 oh, he got to get 45. They they got to. That, that's just too much Hollywood. You know, that, that that's when uh, 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 I, I'll say that uh, – uh, Don, uh, NFL commissioner, to make that call. Miss that. Make sure you miss read. Get that done. Yeah, you know, but he, he, he. Uh, I think he got this that in the bag. Okay, you think he got this in the bag? Well, you know, coming into this year, um, this is like the third year that Brady has been with Brian Leftwich, even though um, Bruce Arians was retired. Is retired. Um, Brian Leftwich is the offensive coordinator. So there's so much familiarity with his current um, coach and Brian Leftwich. So, um, you know, he knows the best way to put Brady in situations. Now, Brady has a lot of weapons. You got Mike Evans. Chris Godwin is coming back from an ACL tear. Uh, no more Antonio Brown. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that distraction. And um, they actually signed some new players. I mean, they um, um, they signed um, who did it? they signed um, uh, Kyle Rudolph, tight end, to replace Gronk. And um, you know, they have they have some more players out there that's going to be great for great uh, Brady. So I see Brady definitely um, doing forty five and. Uh, you know, there's no quit to this man. He that that I mean, if anything, you know, he needs to promote. He he promotes his um, TB with TB12. I mean, we really should consider it because this man is 45 years old and still playing football at an elite level. Where most football players, I mean, they they stop in their mid 30s, right? Mm, when they yeah, get like hey. 31, not actually 31, 32. Their career is over. So, I mean, this and that, is and that was a great career. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, this man is 45 years old. So, I don't he he amazes me and I see him definitely getting 45 touchdowns. All right, this is flip it. So, we're going to defend the opposing point of view. Last season, TB had Gronk losing Gronk probably shaves off two touchdowns. He will be under forty-five touchdowns. Spit face defend. You know, I I, I think that um, uh, he will be under the forty-five touchdowns because they're going to work on balancing that attack a little bit more, so that they don't have you know you know uh, uh, Tom Brady is will be forty-five and with uh, an amazing player. But you gotta use him, as they say, judiciously, because you want him for the real games, which is the playoffs and the big games. So uh, 
Uh, they ain't even going into it with him getting 45. Now, now he's going to get, he Tom Brady, he's going to get 40, 40. But for him to have 45, that might be saying that they got some weaknesses in some other areas that he had to go and get that. And that's what they're trying to balance out. Because New Orleans is not going to be a joke. You know, you know, you know. I, I, I think James Winston's gonna be comeback player of the year. So, uh, 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 and they got a mean defense that Tampa Bay got to face twice. So, you know, hey, uh, 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 the records will come. And given that I don't really think that it's important to Brady to, to hit that hit a particular number, he want that. That number he won is seven. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, First Lady. Well, you know, it's going to be tough for Gronk. I mean, it's going to be tough for Brady to get 45 touchdowns, considering that Gronk had six touchdowns last year. I mean, mm. that's a, yeah, he had six of Tom Brady's 45 touchdowns. I mean, 43 um, um, touchdowns. So it's going to be very, very difficult for him to get that 45 and um, you know losing Gronk is a big deal very big deal because if you remember Gronk is that uh, red zone mm. receiver that can get you a touchdown in the red zone because he's so tall he skies over everybody all he has to do is just jump a little bit and that's where you get it a lot that's where Gronk gets a lot of his touchdown so who is going to be that person for Brady, yeah, they hire uh, Kyle Rudolph, um, but um, is is he going to be? He's not Gronk. That I mean, we 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 always know the connection that um, Gronk and Brady have. So um, it's going to be interesting. I don't see it happening. I, I really think um, it's good. I, I just think he's not going to have as many touchdowns as. He definitely had last year, and try to get to 45 is going to be a lot because even um, um, Godwin is coming off an ACL injury. We're not sure what his ability is going to be after having that injury, and um, you know uh, Bruce Arian is gone now. Yes, um, with um, Leftwich was the offensive coordinator, but you know Bruce Arian also was very instrumental in some of their play calling. So it's going to be, and we all know Bruce Arians loved airing the ball out. So it's going to be a different type of situation. you got a new coach, and he may, even though he usually allows the offensive coordinator to make calls, but um, he's, if I remember, um, he was a ground-and-pound type of um, coach when he was with the Jets. So it's, the whole offense is going to be a little bit different this year. So I just don't see Brady making that 45. All right, Spitface, please take us to break. All right, on the other side of the break, we have another performance from David Givens on Shout Out Part 2. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the crew Spit face over to you. All right, as promised, we have another performance from David Givens. And, you know, uh, uh, we featured uh, David a few weeks ago, and I think he, he was walking away, you know, with shout outs all over the place. So let's see if he can uh, make it, uh, admit, let's see if he can have four straight. Okay? Because uh, uh, it, it might be, ch- we ain't had no four straight. So we gonna see <laughs> DJ. Let's hear delusional. <laughs> you know what? I I kind of know some folks who resemble that word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DJ, hit it. Big mistake I could 
The track was delusional. And uh, First Lady, I, I I see he let out his inner Bruno Mars <laughs> and, and let his pop side. Uh, David said, look, man, I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> if I got to go that way, you know, I want him to know, look, I can do this too, you know. So uh, I, the brother is very, very versatile. I had to get that to him. And uh, and, and, and uh, he knows how to put his songs together. He threw in that sax at the end to make sure it went out smooth, which was a clever move. And uh, But like I said, it seemed like he was channeling his inner Bruno Mars. I'm going to shout it out. What you going? What's the verdict, First Lady? Well, he sure... Um Use the word delusional many times in that song. I can say that. <laughs> Whoever he was talking about, that was sounding a little, sounding more like stalker to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shout it out. I, I, like you said, I thought the song was put together well. A uh, little bit missing with some of the lyrics because, like I said, it was the, he, he kept going to the chorus a lot of times within the song. So, but but other than that, I'm going to shout it out. All right, okay, all right. Now, this is the end of Shout Out. If you like what you heard from David Givens, check him out at davidworld.us and Old Grumpy Radio Network. If you would like to be heard or have any comments, please send your emails and tracks to content at oldgrumpyradio.com. First lady, over to you. It's time for the hard ball picks. And um, the production crew or the the assistants were able to get the results. Okay, the results from the All-Star Week. Um, Dizzy Mack was leading the way with 100,000 points. I was in second with 50,000 points. And Spitface, you had zero points. Okay? All right, let's (laughs) move along. You balance yourself out there. I'm in striking distance. (laughs) <laughs> You're striking this. Well, I don't know about this last week. So last week uh, I was leading with 100,000 points. Dizzy Mac had 50,000 points. And Spit Face, you were in the red. You were minus 200,000 points. So the grand total as of um, today's date, um, Dizzy Mac, 
and Dizzy Mac and uh, me are retired for 150,000 points. And spit face, you're still hanging in there. You're at a minus 200,000 points. So let's get to the current picks by the end of the week. The Yankees will have 73 wins, 50,000 for the correct answer, minus 50,000 for the incorrect answer. These are, again, over, under, and push. We've added the push one. And and I have to tell you, Spitface, you did win one of those push for the All-Star weekend. You said it was going to push the, the number of home runs. It was three home runs, and you pushed it. You got that one right. All right, let's move on. Yankees, 73 wins. I'm going to say, ooh, let's see, they got seven. I'm going to say over. I have to get Dizzy Mac's um, results or his uh, his uh, picks later. Spit face, over or under? I'm going to go with over. They're hot. Mm-hmm. Twins, 58 wins. I'm going to go, oh, actually, let me go to you, Spit face, first. I'm going push. Push, push. I'm going to go over. Well, didn't they just trade somebody? Well, I'll go over. I think they just traded somebody. Astros, 72 wins. I'm going to go over because, you know, the Astros are always pretty good. Uh, Spit face? I'm going over. Okay. The Mets, 71 wins. Spit face? I'm going over on the Mets. Yeah, the Mets have been kind of hot. I'm going over also. The Brewers, 61 wins. I'm going to go under. Did I'm going that? with the push. You're going with the push. All right, Dodgers, 76 wins. Spit face. Mmm. Mmm. I'm I'm gonna go with the under. You went with the under. Uh, now I'm going with the over for the Dodgers. All right, so we'll see how we do next week, and I'll get Dizzy Max picks. All right, Spitface, what is your top story to watch this week? Okay, my top story to watch this week is uh, Demarius Thomas passed away this week, and. Uh, and, and uh, at 33, uh, six months after he retired from football, and they have uh, posthumously diagnosed him with CTE. And oh, yeah. so, yeah, so I think that that is going to be uh, 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 the conversation about CTE in the NFL is going to be a top story for this week. Okay. But I do notice them oversized helmets that they got in practice. <laughs> oh, okay. Them that you, yeah. you notice them, but they wearing them big old helmets, so you know. Well, my top story this week is quarterback competition. My the quarterback <laughs> competition between Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. Right oh. now, there's. Inside knowledge is not inside knowledge, but they're saying that it looks like Baker Mayfield may win that particular battle. So that's the that's one of them I'm looking at, and the other one is in Pittsburgh. One of the reporters said it was between Mason Rudolph. Was it Mason Rudolph mm-hmm. or is it Rudolph Mason? I might have got it. No, Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. Um, Pickett. Was it Pickett, the 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 rookie, and um, Mitch Trubisky? One of the reporters already reported. Very, un- he said, not very uninspiring as far as the competition. Oh man, <laughs> it's not great. So those are what I'm looking at. As top story to be talked about is the competition between the um, quarterbacks. That's 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 a big story. Also, I want to um, salute um, a female agent, uh, and I apologize. Let me get her name. I should have had her name up already, um, uh, to be honest with you. she's uh, sh- uh, She was able to – her name is Shatilia 
Riley. Well, no, 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 I apologize. Anyway, um, there's several female agents that have been doing real well um, this particular um, um, free agency. Uh, one of them is um, Danielle Cantor. She's the only female agent with clients, ink, and she's really inked some huge clients recently. She has uh, Malcolm um, Brogdon. And then there's the agent for, um, all right, I wanted to talk about one of these top agents. And believe it or not, she is a female agent. Her name is Jessica Holtz. And, I mean, she is killing it. She was the first female agent to secure two max contracts for a client. I'm not talking about one. I'm talking about two max contracts. She secured a max deal for Devin Booker of the Phoenix Sun and Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So let's shout it out for Jessica Holt. She's really killing it as a female NBA agent. Join us and our partners, the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center, as we honor our veteran women entrepreneurs. Please visit honorourveteranwomen.com, honorourveteranwomen.com. Check out our current and previous episodes at broadspantiesandsports.com and our Facebook page, BP and Sports. This is Cheryl Smith, the First Lady of Sports Talk and Spitface. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. See you next week.